Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you here, uh, having got up on this rather chilly morning, but uh, nevertheless, it's a bright morning. It's a great morning. And if you haven't got up yet, uh, welcome all the same. The theme of our service today is uh, the church that walks the talk or walks the walk. And I do apologize for the picture on the screen because apparently the person there is not walking they're just watching other people walk. And that's thanks to Pete on the uh, television who said, that's a good way of putting it. So there we are. Welcome anyway. It's difficult in some ways to come and worship when we hear the news that we are hearing so often at the moment. And so we do pray that... We shall be blessed here, but we may be a blessing to others, and particularly those who are in such wartime and suffering situations, situations that uh, very, very few of us here can have ever known anything about. So, Lord, we just pray that you will be with us now, and you will help us and draw close to us as we draw close to you because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us begin in the usual way with a greeting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Grace, mercy, and and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. We're going to stand now and sing our first hymn, which is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Uh, according to the script that I have in front of me, it's four verses, nine slides. It should be on the screen, and let's stand up to sing.
us say together a prayer on the screen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second command, which Jesus said, is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and live in love and peace with all. So let us say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now today's collect in the beautiful, wonderful words of the old prayer book, the Sunday next before Lent. Almighty God, Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. He who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to stand and sing our second hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
Thank you. Do sit down, please. Catherine's now going to come and read the two uh, uh, lessons to us, and then she'll pray for Dave, who'll come and speak to us. The first reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 20, and it can be found on page 1111 in the Pew Bibles. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the second reading is from Luke chapter 20, verses 45 to 47, on page 997. Warning against the teachers of the law. While all the people were listening, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I pray for Dave. Lord, thank you for the work that Dave has put into preparing this talk. And we pray that you will speak now through him and open our hearts to hear and receive your word. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all this morning. I've been given the title following our series of what sort of church should we be, a church that walks the talk. And um, as a sort of subheading, a church that's uh, authentic, um, that has integrity, and that demonstrates the good life. There's um, a poem by Maya Angelou, and it says this. 
I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. I don't know if you go along with that, but anyway. Um, there's another expression that people use. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. These little phrases are longing for authenticity in relationship, in friendship. I've been privileged over the years to have uh, some lovely friends and um, I went to the stag do of uh, one of my friends called Tim and the start of the day was a game of football out on a football field which was good fun so we all got out there um, and uh, being the groom my friend Tim was dressed slightly differently to everyone else. Uh, in fact, he had um, a pair of uh, leopard skin trunks and a pair of wellies, and that was all he was wearing. And then he's got this tattoo on him, which I didn't know, and it's down the side of his body, and it says, to honour God which is what his name means, Timothy, to honour God. Well, as we played this game of football, gradually other people in the park where we were playing sort of moved away a little bit, um, especially those with families. I felt a bit sorry for them, really. But um, anyway, it was quite a fun start to the day, and, uh, and we had a good game. I'm not really sure how that was honouring God, but actually, he is someone who honours God greatly in, in so many ways. On my own stag do, we hired a couple of um, canal boats, and I think we were pirates and sailors, and I was the damsel in distress, so I was dressed up as well. Um, and uh, James Couchman was there, who most of you know, and he, he had a water pistol, and he was firing people along the canal path. I'm not sure that was particularly honouring to God either. Um, but it was good fun. But I wonder, what does it mean to have authenticity in friendship? What actually does it mean to honour God, to live a life that pleases him? In Micah we read, uh, what, O oh man, is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Those are things that should be at our core. Jesus talks in his parable about the wise and foolish builders, and he finishes with these words. The wise builder is like the one who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. So it's not just about the word and parading around as we heard in our reading from Luke and making a show of our religion, but actually putting them into practice in a way that really helps people and affects their lives. We're going to watch a short clip on the screen now if that could be put up and it's from the good life oh this started you watch it. Oh. <laughs> Jerry get the trolley right <laughs> Barbara quick sound right Mom, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> now, look, if it hadn't been for Jerry, we'd have lost a third of this by now. Yeah, now we've only lost a quarter. <laughs> Thank you, fans. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is a miracle. <laughs> what have you 
so much as Snickers, I'm going straight back indoors. <laughs> Margo, we couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. Even I can see that this is a genuine emergency. After all, what are friends for? Mind you, this will be the first and last time, so make good use of me. Right. Run a bean to the box, please. And Barbara, you can start shifting that lot. Well, if that's the best you can do, we'll be here till Christmas. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Goodbye. No, Margot. Oh, Tom, for goodness sake, that's the most ungrateful thing I've ever heard. I mean, Margot's doing her best. She's the odd one out here. It's not her fault if she's all weak and feeble. Weak and feeble, am I? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare our first harvest well and truly gathered. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, Jerry, you're a lovely fellow. Uh -huh. Margo? Yes. Yeah. I quite like you. <laughs> Well, I expect some of you will remember that uh, moment from The Good Life, that uh, wonderful series uh, from um, quite a few years ago now. Um, anyway, there's uh, Tom, he leaves the rat race and he's set up this um, allotment in his back garden. He t he's trying self-sufficiency. He's got a bad back. There's uh, Jerry with um, a broken leg in the mud and, uh, and Barbara and Margot. And uh, although Tom and Barbara, they try to be self-sufficient, they actually need their good neighbours to help them, to help them out. I know it's a bit of fun, that. Um, but I was thinking of uh, that walking the walk. Um, like Margot and Jerry, it's easy to feel undervalued when the people you're trying to help seem ungrateful. But you have to carry on being a good neighbour, nevertheless. It's part of leading the good life. Even when it seems like you're wading through mud, know that actually God is there helping you to be a good neighbour. And we read in the Psalms, you lifted me out of the mud and mire and set my feet on a solid rock. We know that when we're going through difficult times as a community, perhaps, that God is there and we can stand firm on him. It's that authenticity of relationship with each other, but also with God. When Jesus talks about the final judgment, this is what he says in Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he'll sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations, all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. 
I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you like this? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. A church that walks the talk. I just wonder if you can picture somebody walking down Western High Street, um, somewhere else in the community, and uh, they're wandering along, and they see you, or see one of us in the street. I wonder what thoughts cross their mind. A member of my family died, and you came and sat with me. You put your arm round me. I had a baby, and you cooked a meal for me. I lost my job, and you bought me groceries. My life was messed up, and you showed me Jesus. My life was fine, and you showed me Jesus, or I thought it was fine. My garden needed sorting, and you took care of it for me. Maybe they think, oh, there's someone that cares about the world that we live in. The world is on its knees in prayer for the Ukraine at the moment. And those people joined in. I wonder what sort of thoughts uh, someone walking down the street might have when they see us. I don't know, perhaps those form some of those thoughts for some people. I hope so. I hope that we're making an impact in our community for God's kingdom and his glory. I'm just going to refer you back to um, that passage we had in Luke, but I'm going to read it from um, Matthew's version, because I think it's quite interesting the way Jesus starts as a he's sort of um, beefed it out a bit uh, that passage and um, in Matthew 23 it says this Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses seat so you must obey them and do everything they tell you which is a great start and you think oh good you know, that sort of makes sense. He's going along with the leaders of the day, those appointed by God. But then he says, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. And then he goes on and talks about them parading around in their flowing robes and wanting their seats of honour. There's that lovely song that we sometimes sing, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. It seems that those religious leaders, what they wanted was for their own beauty somehow to be seen, dressing themselves up in a particular way and wanting others to copy them rather than to follow Jesus. They weren't pointing the way as they should have been. In the passage we had from Ephesians 5, There are lots of uh, don'ts, if you like. There's lots of um, sins listed. And uh, when a preacher gets a passage like this, um, you start rubbing your hands together and think, oh good, I can bash everyone over the head on Sunday morning. Um, 
I don't really think that. Um, but as well as those list of th- sins, there's a reminder that we are light, that we're to be good and righteous and truthful instead of being darkness. In the Book of Common Prayer service, when the offering is brought forward, quite often uh, the person taking the offering will say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It seems to me that that combining of the offering of money and of our life is there uh, in that moment, which is wonderful. At the end of the passage in Ephesians 5, it says this. Be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's what we do when we gather together in worship. And may our worship flow out into the community. We're together in being authentic and living with integrity, making a difference in the world. But also, and perhaps most importantly, God will help us to do it. God will help us to live lives and be a church that walks the talk. If you think about all those things that are listed in Ephesians, um, I'm just going to read you a verse from the King of Love, my shepherd is. Uh, to finish from Psalm 23. Perverse and foolish, oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. Amen. Thanks very much, Dave. The hymn I've chosen, the next one, is an old one. Some may know it. And the chorus is trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. It's got some wonderful words, so let's stand and sing it.
say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do sit down. Now Rachel is going to come and lead us in our prayers. So let's pray. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. And so, Father, we thank you. We begin by thanking and praising you that you are sovereign and that we can come before you, such an almighty, sovereign God, with our prayers this morning. The earth is yours and everything in it. Ukraine is yours and everyone in it. We cry out to you this morning for Ukraine. We've seen what's unfolding there and our hearts are breaking for this nation and for the people who even now, at this very moment, are in fear for their lives and for their liberty. We hold this nation before you. Archbishop Justin Welby and Archbishop Stephen Cottrell have written this prayer for this moment. I'm going to read it out. A prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Father, too, we cry out for the millions of people in Russia who do not want this war, but in whose name it's being waged, and who cannot demonstrate for fear of being arrested. We pray that you would deliver them from evil. You are above all rulers and authorities and earthly powers, 
and we declare your greatness over the nation of Ukraine and over that whole region. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So we, at this moment, we want to pray for our nation, for our queen who has walked the talk for her entire life. And we pray for our government, that they would be wise and brave and walk with integrity at this time. And Father, would you make us to be a people who would walk the talk, and that we would never grow tired of speaking truth, even when we feel marginalized, that we would continue to speak out for free speech so that we can continue to walk and talk without being arrested, just as we've prayed for our brothers and sisters around the world who cannot do that. And we pray that as a nation, we would act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Sometimes there is a, a scripture or a word that is so special, and today, without even, even knowing that it was going to happen, that scripture from Micah came up in the liturgy, and it came up in Dave's talk, and it came to me when I was praying this morning. So I, I think that's a word for us now, that we would act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. And the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and all who live in it, and thank you, Father, that although you are, you are almighty God and you are sovereign, and yet you know each one of us. You formed us, you created us, you called us by name. And in this, in this moment, Father, we want to hold before you individuals known to us and loved by us who are so in need of your healing power and your loving touch today. Remember Liz and Chris Chatfield. Teresa, Gary, and Ivor. Liz and Rob Hutt. And we'll just take a few moments to hold before, before God in our prayers those known to us who we want to remember this morning. And let's draw our prayers together by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Rachel. Shall we stand now together to sing our final hymn, before the throne of God above.
sit down. We're drawing to the end of our service now, and uh, there is the closing prayer, which will shortly come up on the slide and on the screens. I feel I perhaps ought to say just one other thing, and that's from Jude, the second to last of the books in the New Testament. In the light of everything that's going on in our world and in our nation, and in just our locality. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace and love to love and serve the Lord. Christ. Amen. And have a great week. Thank you very much. <clears throat>